Hello and welcome back. This is our final lesson on playback and we'll be briefly discussing the playback of Ritarando, Accelerando and Fermatas. Now, as with many of the things that I've showed you in the other lessons, if we simply add Accelerando, Ritarando or Fermatas to a score, Sibelius will interpret these. However, often when working with changes in tempo, you as the composer will want to be a little bit more specific and nuanced about the performance of these things than the program. However, fortunately, we can customize these things, and as before, we do this via the Inspector window. So I am going to select my Accelerando, open up Inspector, and here in the same place as we've seen before, we can make some changes to our element. So first of all, I can choose between a linear, early and late accelerando, linear meaning that the accelerando will be constant throughout, and early and late of course corresponding to a more curved rate of accelerando. Underneath that we can also type in how fast or slow the accelerando should be. And you can see that it's currently set at 133%, meaning that it will accelerate to 133% of the original tempo. And so if I were to go below 100%, my accelerando would actually get slower because its goal tempo is lower than 100%, 100% of course being our starting tempo. And it's quite impressive how flexible we can actually be with this feature. You can put in some quite astronomical numbers here. I could, for example, get my accelerando to increase in speed by 200%. But I could also increase the tempo by 2000% if I wanted to. What we can also do is to set our goal tempo in beats per minute, otherwise known as BPM, which allows us to be very specific about exactly where our accelerando or ritardando should end up. So that's it for accelerando and ritardando, but how about fermatas? So when it comes to fermatas, if I select an object with a fermata, I can again go to the inspector window, and if I look under the playback section, I'll see a checkbox for fermata, and here I have the option to change the length of the fermata. I can change its duration and I can make it as short or as long as I desire. And I can also add a gap after the fermata if I want to. Now, while we're on the topic of formatas, as a way of finishing up with playback hacks, I thought that I'd show you two last pretty cool things with live playback. So, first, we've got to make sure that live playback is turned on in the Play tab. And sometimes at formatas, you might want to have a broken chord, a chord that arpeggiates upwards. And if you use the Sibelius line that represents this, Sibelius will arpeggiate the chord. However, you don't have any control over the speed of the arpeggio. You just have to take it as Sibelius gives it to you. If you do want to set this manually so that the pitches are spaced the way that you want them spaced, you can actually select the individual pitches in the chord and then via the inspector window, if you then click live start position, you have the option to change the playback position of the note. That is to say that if I increase this number here, Sibelius will delay when that note is played. And we can of course do this not only for notes at formatas, but for literally any note in our entire score. But in this particular instance, if I then select the other pitches in my chord and gradually increase their space so that they're stacked, when we do the playback, they play like an arpeggio. The only problem though is that you can hear that these notes still have the same length as before, they've just been shifted along, meaning that they don't all stop at the same time. So if we want them to start at different times but stop at the same time, we're going to have to change their note lengths. And we do this in the inspection window again by clicking Live Duration. Now the duration of this note is currently set at 1024 and its start position is 100, meaning that I'm going to have to reduce its duration by 100. So 100 from 1024 is 924. For the next note, I'm going to have to subtract 200 from the duration. And then for the last note, I'm going to have to subtract 300 from the duration. So if I now then do the playback, there we have it. All of the notes start separately, but they end together. 
And just to let you know, back in the inspector window, it's also possible to push these note entries into the minus so that they enter before they should. So live start position and live duration are two additional little playback features that are very good to know are there, just in case you come across something very specific that you'd like to use them in. And of course, if you're trying to create something that is as audibly close to a real ensemble as possible, one of the things that really helps is to build in small bits of imperfection. In reality, instrumentalists don't play in perfect synchronization. Someone's always going to be milliseconds early or milliseconds late. And with these features, it's even possible to try recreating that effect. So I hope that these playback tricks and hacks have been a little bit helpful and I look forward to catching you in the next lesson.